the latest headlines from BBC World News. Barack Obama has asked NATO's European allies for more help to turn the tide in Afghanistan. He said the threat from al-Qaeda is greater in Europe than the United States. The Transatlantic Alliance is celebrating its 60th anniversary. Let's go now live to Baden-Baden, where Angela Merkel and President Obama are speaking. This time in southern Germany, and we are delighted that um, um, now he, as the president, for the first time visits the Federal Republic of Germany, and we are happy, we are delighted that we, because of the anniversary of the NATO, now can um, discuss the basics um, of the strategies. And we have had a friendly relationship for a very long time uh, with the United States, and I'm sure we can continue this relationship. We have uh, briefly discussed um, the tasks, everything what uh, we will have to do, and we have shown that we are willing to work together in, the, in a partnership, and we are grateful that you have come uh, to Europe uh, to work together, and it is a common goal we share, um, because, um, of course, the states are quite a power in order to help to overcome this economic crisis. Today, one of the topics we will discuss is the relationship with Russia, European interests, and on Sunday in Prague, we will have a summit uh, between the United States of America, and uh, we um, as the Federal Republic of Germany would like to contribute uh, to Afghanistan, and we are aware of our responsibilities uh, regarding training of the police, for example, deployment. We also would like to have uh, to keep a relationship with Iran in order to exclude uh, nuclear um, influence. And uh, we are also happy to know that the United States of, of America would like um, to start a new beginning so that we can continue a, a peaceful relationship. I think we have uh, quite a lot of tasks uh, to tackle, a lot of contributions uh, will have to be made, and I am sure you as the President are very much welcome here, and you have um, also been welcomed with all the cheering. A lot of people are very pleased um, that you are here, and we hope to see See you another time as well. It is wonderful uh, to be here in Germany, and I want to thank uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, for her leadership, uh, her friendship, uh, and to say to all the German people uh, that we are grateful uh, to have such an extraordinary ally. And I think I speak on behalf of the American people uh, that we consider the relationship between the United States and Germany to be. Uh, one of our most important uh, relationships. Uh, and uh, I have been spending uh, quite a bit of time lately with uh, Chancellor Merkel and continue to be impressed uh, with her wisdom and leadership and diligence uh, in pursuing uh, the interests of her people. Uh, over the last several days, what we've been grappling with is an economic crisis that uh, is unlike anything we've seen since the 30s. And uh, just uh, a stark reminder for those of us in the United States, our jobs report came out uh, today, and it showed that uh, we had lost 663,000 jobs just this month, uh, which has pushed our unemployment rate to 8.5 percent, uh, the highest in 25 years. Uh, and we've lost 5.1 million jobs since this uh, financial crisis and recession began. Uh, so uh, obviously this is hitting the United States hard, uh, but I think what we discussed uh, and the reason we acted swiftly and boldly in London was the fact that none of us can isolate ourselves from 
uh, a global market. Uh, that uh, the economies now are so interdependent, uh, capital flows uh, across borders uh, occur in the blink of an eye, and as a consequence, uh, if we do not have concerted action, uh, then we will have collective failure. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that was done in London. Uh, I think the fact that we have a regulatory a framework that can prevent this crisis from happening again. Uh, the fact that we have taken uh, collectively steps to not only encourage growth, but also to make sure that we're helping emerging markets and poor countries deal with uh, the uh, consequences of this financial crisis. Uh, none of those things alone guarantee immediate recovery, but they are necessary foundations for recovery. Uh, and because we committed to meeting again uh, in the fall, it, it allows us to review what we've done. And if what we've done is not sufficient, and we continue to see a deterioration uh, in the situation, then we're going to go back at it uh, and uh, keep on doing so until we get it right. Uh, as uh, Chancellor Merkel mentioned, uh, the economy is just one of our challenges. Uh, and uh, as we celebrate uh, this uh, important landmark for NATO, uh, we are reminded that uh, not only do we have immediate uh, joint efforts in Afghanistan that have to be bolstered and uh, have to become more effective, uh, but we also have to have a strategic framework for how uh, NATO moves forward. This has been the most successful alliance in uh, modern history, an alliance that uh, was so effective that we never had to fight. Uh, and uh, that kind of vision that was implemented, uh, that kind of imagination, uh, has to be adapted to the 21st century challenges uh, that we face. Uh, not just uh, Afghanistan, but uh, there are a whole host of uh, other hot spots and challenges, and we've got to figure out what uh, is NATO's role in that? Uh, what is the partnership between the United States and the European Union's role in that? Uh, whether it's issues of climate change or poverty or, uh, uh, or uh, trying to bring about uh, peace in regions that have known conflict for a very long time. In all of these areas, cooperation is going to be critical. And leadership uh, from our two countries is going to be critical. So uh, I'm very pleased uh, to uh, have a, a partner in, in Chancellor Merkel in these efforts, and uh, I am confident that moving forward, uh, that we are going to be able to make slow and steady progress to advance the cause of peace and prosperity. With that, uh, why don't we take some questions? Yeah. Who would like to put a question, Mr. Beverunger? Michael Beverunge, TV in Germany. You've had a very enthusiastic reception here in the streets of Baden-Baden by the people, but there is also fear and anxiety uh, in Germany about what the future might bring. Your administration is calling for a fundamental reform of NATO, or perhaps in your words, change. But what, Mr. President, is your personal grand design for the new NATO? Will it be the policeman of the world, the global one? Uh, should Germany shoulder more responsibility, especially in Afghanistan? Okay. One question for the Chancellor. Frau Bundeskanzlerin, wo sehen Sie die Chancellor, Grenzen? Chancellor, where do you think, where are the boundaries of NATO and uh, commitment uh, of Germany? Uh, first of all, uh, I don't come bearing grand designs. Uh, I'm here to listen, to share ideas, uh, and to uh, jointly, as uh, one of many NATO allies, uh, to help shape uh, our vision for the future. Uh, if NATO becomes everything, then it's nothing. So obviously, we're going to have to define and clarify its roles, responsibilities uh, for the 21st century. Uh, and uh, you know, I, what we should expect is that we will set up a process in order to do that. I don't think Germany should feel anxious about that. Uh, I think that 
the United States uh, and Germany uh, and all the other NATO countries should see this as an opportunity to put together an architecture that is as successful at meeting our new challenges as the uh, prior architecture was at meeting the challenges of the Cold War. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously we already have one test case, and that is in Afghanistan. Uh, it is as complex of a problem as we're going to see, uh, partly because it's not just a problem of Afghanistan, but it's also a problem uh, that uh, exists in Pakistan. Uh, we've put forward a new comprehensive review of how we think uh, we should approach this that recognizes the military alone cannot solve these problems.